Uh, so today, we're gonna teach ourselves how to retap the trailing arm. So here's your trailing arm. Um, these studs hold the rear wheel onto the car. Um, the issue is you're looking at, you know, pushing 50 year old cast aluminum with steel studs that have been tapped into aluminum right in these bumps. And that's it. That's why the torque on these is only 12 to 14 foot pounds because uh, they're worried about you yanking these uh, uh, threads through the aluminum. So if this fails, uh, the wheel could fall off the car and you could get killed. Um, so the idea is that we're going to reinforce these with some keen inserts. And um, you won't even know they're there when they're done, but the pulling force will be dramatically increased and it's a big safety thing. Um, so we get the patent machine jig and we're going to start that process it comes with a short one and a long one the long one is for is for drilling and the short one is for tapping so first thing you do is just label it t for tap d for drilling and uh we'll start this process on rick's uh website it tells you everything that you need um so here's a uh, Here's the keen insert kit. Here's the setting tool. Here's the keen inserts. You need uh, 12 of them, so you have to buy some extras. You need some tapping oil for aluminum. Uh, you need a nice new tap. And you need a good drill bit. Um, of course, you need a handheld drill. He says you don't need any tools other than the handheld drill, but you do need something to hold the tap. So you're gonna, I got this out of my tap kit, but you're gonna need something to hold this tap. One is you gotta get your hub out. Just follow your, uh, hand, your Bentley manual on that, and you gotta get this out. You don't need to remove the differential in the spring. I'm working on another project. So once you get, once you get this out, then you can proceed, which is not going back in, by the way. This is a Here's a CV joint that I'm putting in. And here's my differ differentials all been restored. New seals and stuff. Those are other projects, but this, this one's just on the trailing arm here. So after, you, after you've examined all these to make sure none are broken or messed up, um, I want you to loosen them all, loosen all these up so you can remove it because it'll be easier to clean. What you do is you uh, double nut this with some uh, 5 sixteenths, whatever it is, uh, thought you got laying around and then you're gonna once once you got once you got tight you're gonna secure you're gonna back it off all right so we're gonna get this a little little bit tight like this then you're gonna just move it like this there it goes Yeah, it's moving now. Once it's loose, you don't have to remove it. Just just uh, break the nuts free and, and take them off and mo move them to the next stud. Now that you got all the studs out, you want to get a, a, a fine a fine wire brush and you want to clean, clean the face of this thing. Use fine, you don't want to gouge this thing, so you want, you want a fine wire brush. Mine was already clean, but I'm just showing you what I did. And then get some brake cleaner and get this thing wiped, wiped clean. The idea is you want that patent jig to sit perfectly flat on this thing. You don't want to take a chance and it being um, not dead nuts on. So next, uh, just loosely put one in right there and then see where the other two line up loosely put those on and these are the three that are going to secure it down while you tap these three then you reverse it take that off now you know which three need to stay on let's double nut it again and put it and just get it snug in there i'm not going to get the torque wrench out i'm just going to you know make it uh mechanic snug and um that should be fine for this round now you got three of these on there pretty snug now um i'm a tip just a little bit of oil in these three holes just because it's getting a little hard to reach just to help with the drilling 
and um, already did that. And then um, you're gonna put this back on. Like that. And then you're going to grab some flat washers to protect this thing. And then you're gonna put three nuts on. Again, everything I'm doing is with is with hand, hand, hand tools. You don't wanna Work this thing down and put another on that too. But you're just gonna again just make make it uh, make it make it snug. Three nuts on washers. Next thing I do is take a flashlight and just do a spot check. Make sure it looks flat in case it went on crooked or something like that. To spot check to make sure it, it looks like it's uh, it sat properly. So you can pick uh, keen certs or Hela coils. Um, my understanding is Hela coils coils are more readily available um, overseas, but United States, Keen Certs is better. I think the Keen is a little bit stronger. Um, so I went that route. Um, Patton's uh, website has everything you need to get from McMaster.com. You can source it from any place as long as it's these exact same sizes. Um, but here are the part numbers, tool, extra inserts, some tap matching fluid or you can use WD-40, uh, hand tap, and then the drill bit. I did want to point out I found the braking plate to be a bit of an annoyance right here. So I uh, disconnected it from here and I just have it tied up right here. I, I covered it up keep shavings off of it and stuff. Next step is to put a little bit of oil on the end of these things, wipe it around. Did want to mention that these studs, see how it's short and long? Of course the short end goes into the into the trailing arm. The long the long end is what's connecting to the nut here, okay? So make sure you put the short short end end um, in when you're doing this for support. Next, you want to see how deep you got to drill. So stick your D for drill in. And I'm using one of these little cheap ringy things. This is a quarter inch drill bit, which is smaller. Put that in there. Snug it up. And then I'm going to screw it tight, and that's going to give me a, a depth to the bottom of that TA thread. So I've stuck this in my vise. That way I can use these, these inside ones. Two point six eight inches. Got the drill bit in there. Transfer. 2.68. Um, I have a, just a piece of duct tape on there because uh, logical tape is too dark. So you want to drill all three of these out at the same time. Put a little more oil in there. That sucker back in there. Make sure it's the one that says D for a drill. You want to add some oil on the air. So you're gonna hold it firmly like this. Make sure you have your safety goggles on and you wanna run this at high, at high speed, going in very slowly in and out, pulling those shavings out. There's a lot of shavings that's gonna come out and they're gonna go flying everywhere. And um, just be patient. drilling I'm checking this depth to make sure this tape hasn't moved on me you also notice I put some white paint on the end that helped a lot with seeing that line I couldn't I tried a uh, magic marker and it, you know the white paint helps a lot Remember, you can always drill a little more but you don't want to over drill it
truly is nerve-wracking. See all the shavings. You want to get your vacuum out and suck all this crap up. It's uh, definitely a nerve-wracking process, but I have trust in this now, jig. Uh, Rick's instructions on the website says it's not necessary to put a 45 camphor on these. I I'm going to go ahead and just give it a, a little hit with just a bit I got sitting around. You just put it in there and push down firmly and just turn, turn, it, turn it slow. Uh, just to take the edge off of it, I think it might help setting those um, keen insert guides too a little bit. Uh, and you're keeping this intact. You're gonna do your next step. You're gonna do the threading. You're not gonna remove this plate until you're all done. All three. Get the shorter one. T for tap. Put a little oil in there. Oil this sucker up down here. This is uh, aluminum, so it's gonna go very easily. And you're gonna do this until it bottoms out. It's only about a half inch deep, so it's, you're not going very far. There she is. Of course, this thing's gonna be full of little shavings you can blow out and vacuum out. Nice threads in there. Things vacuumed up and cleaned up. Now it's safe to remove this plate, and we're gonna insert those first three keen inserts and um, see how they fit. They set, and they're below the face of the trailing arm. Um, you're going to be good to go. That's some nice and large threaded holes now. Of course, I'm spot checking that my studs actually do screw into the insert, and they do. It's a nice tight fit, so that's good. So. All of them fit good. The problem I was having was not all of these were going all the way in. They were kind of getting stuck almost. Anyways, I just, before, before I panicked, um, I just kept trying different inserts. And I, I found that some inserts go all the way in, no problem, and some didn't. So, anyways, you want to turn these by hand. And they need to go in smoothly by hand. If they don't, you got to back out, clean everything out, maybe put the tap in there again. And you want this thing to set just just below the surface, right at the end of my camp for there. Yeah. So they're all they're all looking pretty good right now. But first I have first uh, two of them didn't fit well. All I had to do was just keep trying some different ones and eventually they all kind of felt kind of fell into place. So this one's good. You're basically doing at this point is you're following the manufacturer's directions for the for the uh, key lock inserts. I don't trust my finger strength, so I'm gonna give each of these just a little, just a little snug of a turn, so I make sure I feel feel resistance. Yeah, just a little bit, just to make sure it's snug. I don't want to bend these tabs. All right. So now we're going to push these tabs in, which is going to push its way through the thre aluminum threads and lock this thing in. And it looks like this. So this big end is the hammer end, and this goes over the insert, kind of like that. And that slides over, and you, you're going to hit it till it gets till it gets to the end. You'll hear the you'll hear the sound change. See how it presses itself in there. Really nice. Obviously, the goal here, that's really nice. See, these obviously need to be below the, the height of this trailing edge. 
which all of these are. This was this was a nice nice clean install for these three. Well, next up is obvious. You gotta do the the next three. So you're gonna take that stud, move it to your new insert. This stud, move it to your new insert. And of course, you know, double nut, break it loose, set that new insert. And you don't need to make it tight. You just need to make it snug, be fine. And um, just gotta break it loose with the double nuts if, if they're not uh, unscrewing for you. Jig's been rotated, nuts are snug. Check the back, nice and tight. Everything's lined up good. We start the process again, oil. Stick your uh, drill tap in and uh, drill these uh, three out. And uh, do it all. All three are drilled out. Made an ungodly mess again. Uh, the only tip I learned that time is this time I pushed the drill just a little bit further, just a little tiny bit. You can definitely tell when you get to the end of the factory depth. Um, the uh, You start to hear like a loud murmur of some sort uh, when it hits the back of this to, of the trailing arm uh, when you're drilling and then you know for sure you're there and um, but uh, everything uh, went really good no problems okay. clean and vacuum uh, everything up real good yeah, I'm gonna put just a little bit of a little bit of a little bit that's fine we're gonna clean it again actually you can vacuum actually you can remove all these studs now get your work on your final end. cleaning I'm giving a little 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 brake cleaner shot and a, and a q-tip and I'll blow it with um, some air once that um, brake cleaner is evaporated, which only takes a minute, just a few seconds. That's good. Now we're ready to put the inserts in. Well, these are all ready to go. The hard part for me was just cycling through different ones of these until they kind of went in um, almost on their own. Um, ended up, you know, like I said, I ended up moving a couple of these with my wrench just as long as I didn't feel resistance. The idea is to get the bottom of that insert to be kind of flush with your recess. It does not need the bottom out. So don't feel like you need to do that. You just need to get it set the right depth. Now I'm going to wire brush it again just to make sure there's no burrs or anything you know that's on these edges. Yeah, in it. And then we'll do some more cleaning. So I get that oil out of there. Tapping oil. I'm going to clean your studs. Get the tapping oil off of them. Final wipe out Q tips with some air. Let this uh, dry out a little bit. I'm going to start reinstalling. I'm put the uh, short the short end into the trailing arm put a little thread lock on it you can use red thread locker if you want I'm using blue the medium strength and uh, get this started there should be able to uh, this on there nice and tight
torque is about 10 to 12 foot pounds. You're gonna feel it get pretty tight though. And uh, I'm not trying to break anything here. Get all six in, put a little thread lock on, you should be good to go. Good. The only thing I'm doing is I measured my studs on the on the other side, and um, I'm just making sure that they're in the ballpark and not glaring, glaringly off. Um, they're all in depth-wise, just a little bit deeper, not even a sixteenth, you know, of an inch, just a little bit deeper. But they're all pretty even, which is the important part. So I should not have any problems with my nylon nuts. So, uh, everything so far so good. Now I just need to put my new hubs in. But, uh, that was a good project. Now, now I just need to duplicate it on the other side. Pretty easy. And this, uh, this jig from Patton is uh, worth every, every penny so you don't screw up. It worked uh, extremely well. Of course, this is fully reusable. You could probably sell it again if you wanted to. You could donate it to a club. You could do all your friends' cars. This thing will probably last a long time.